All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of NYC Crime Spot. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I had already visited the location that we're going to today in about a year ago, but that video has since been taken down from the channel for various reasons. However, I felt it would be worth it to come back and uh, go a little bit the extra mile this time. So if you are watching this and you looked at the title, then you know that we are heading over to 1605 18th Avenue here in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, former location of Sammy the Bull's Tally's Cocktail Lounge and Restaurant at 1605 18th Avenue. We're heading to that location now. We'll talk a little bit across the street from that location and then we'll go inside yeah we'll go inside that'll be fun right <laughs> we'll get something to eat look at the place and we'll talk about a couple other things of importance in regard to that location all right nice Sunday morning a little breezy a little cold but overall not too bad all right, so let's get a look at the location and then we'll have a little conversation. A location conversation in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. All right. So right there, 6205 18th Avenue. I think I said 1605 by accident before. 6205 18th Avenue in Bensonhurst. Right now it's called the Like Cafe. It's a Chinese restaurant, what they describe as Hong Kong fast food. But it is the former location of Tally's. And I will put up some photos right now. in contrast to what it appears to be today. As I mentioned, we will be going inside. All right, so let's talk about a couple of events that occurred inside the confines of 6205 18th Avenue here in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Well, for one, Friday, August 23rd, 1985, at around 2.40 a.m., 37-year-old Joseph Stymie D'Angelo, close associate of Sammy the Bull Gravano, a man that he would later refer to as his Luca Brasi in his book. He would be murdered inside this former restaurant of Tally's by a Colombo associate by the name of Anthony Frezza, who, according to Sammy, had just gotten into an argument with a woman at a local bar by the name of the Green Lantern. It would be after that argument that the woman who was in that bar with Anthony Frezza, she would then go up over here to Tally's and uh, she would be talking to Joseph Stymie D'Angelo, who is a co-owner, had a, a similar business interest in this location with Sammy. And she would start talking to him, complaining about this guy that was bothering her up at the bar. And ultimately, this guy Frezza would stroll right into there, into Tally's, get into an argument with Stymie over him bothering this woman at the local bar and Stymie would be killed inside 6205 18th Avenue the location that we're looking at now Frezza would get his own he would ultimately uh, lose his life when he would be lured to a location where what we're told Greg Scarpa Jr. was and other cohorts and Frezza would be shot multiple times strangled and buried in a Staten Island beach that was what he got they didn't give Sammy the satisfaction of doing it himself but that is uh, ultimately what occurred so that is one incident 
that happened inside 6205 18th Avenue, the former site of Tally's. Now we're going to get closer, and as I mentioned, we are going to go inside. We're going to get closer to talk about one of the other murders that occurred inside this restaurant. But we're just going to talk about uh, something else that didn't exactly happen here, but a portion of it did. Now, on uh, January 7th, 1986, another associate of Sammy's, Nicholas Nicky Cowboy Romando, would be murdered. Now, he would meet up over here at this location, apparently with Thomas Huck Carbonara. He would pick him up right outside Tally's. They would pick up Joseph Peruta, sometimes referred to as Old Man. And while sitting in the front seat of the car, Nicky Cowboy would be shot dead by Joseph Peruta. He'd be shot in the head from the back seat by Joseph Peruta. Nicky Cowboy, a man who Sammy the Bull referred to as a guy who became a loose cannon and started taking a lot of drugs. Sammy even mentioned that he felt that he was going to start his own kind of little gang and maybe distance himself. Well, according to Sammy, he was unstable. He had done work with these guys and he had to go. So they would pick him up right here in front of 6205 18th Avenue, drive him off, and he would take the cruise that would end his life. Let's go across the street. We'll talk about another incident, then we'll go inside. Monday, November 2nd, 1987. Somewhere between 3 and 5 a.m. inside Tally's, which you're looking at now, Michael DeBat would be found shot dead. Michael DeBat, another associate of Sammy the Bull in his crew, involved with murders with Sammy, one including the murder of Frank Fiala at the Plaza Suite, where he was a bouncer. He had also been working behind the bar here at Tally's. Now, much like I just told you... Um, before this, in reference to Nicky Cowboy, this is another guy who Sammy was close to for many years. He was close with his father. When Michael DeBat's father dies, Sammy kind of steps in, helps Michael, helps him with some of his father's debt, and kind of takes him under his wing. But ultimately, he becomes addicted to drugs. He's doing crack. He's becoming very unstable. His personality is diminishing, essentially. Paranoia. And it comes to a point where, once again, he's done work with Sammy. He feels he could no longer trust this individual. So he's going to tell uh, Thomas Huck Carbonara, according to Sammy, that's who pulls the trigger. Thomas Huck Carbonara. In tow with, with Huck Carbonara is Luis Valario and Eddie Garofola. But according to what Sammy says, Thomas Huck Carbonara would be the one to pull the trigger on Michael DeBat. And there's a photo of them taking his body out. I'll juxtapose that right here so you can see. And interestingly enough, there was an article that came out from Bob Hubert at the Daily News, and he was kind of taking shots at DeBat. He was saying some uh, interesting things in reference to tallies in the bat. And then he would get a response from a local Bensonhurst resident. Let's step away for a second. Let's go over that. Daily News. Thursday, November 5th, 1987. Specialty of House at Tally's. Duck. Written by Bob Herbert. The sign on the blue and white awning says Tally's Restaurant and Lounge. But that has always been deceptive. You can't get no food there, the cop said. It's not like a place where you take the family to eat. It ain't a great place to be a bartender either said a guy named Lou DeMarco. He had an unlit cigar stub in his mouth, and it pointed almost straight up as he chuckled at his joke. The last two bartenders, or owners, or whatever front names are given to the front men at Tally's, have turned up dead. Two down in two years. Applications are already being circulated for a successor. Only the highly suicidal need apply. Tally's is a small, dark, and normally undistinguished joint at 6205 18th Avenue in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. It has a wooden bar along the right wall, a jukebox in the rear, and some tables along the left wall that are so small there's no danger of putting a dinner plate on them. Dining in Tally's is totally discouraged. People who ask for food are looked at funny. Much of Tally's patronage 
comes from small-time bookies, number runners, and assorted mob groupies, whose ultimate hero is John Gotti. They are impatient with cornballs, who think that a restaurant is a place to eat. The latest so-called owner of Tally's was a 300-pound flunky named Michael DeBat. To get an idea of how swift he was, just consider that he's 37 years old and he lived with his mother. Last Sunday night, DeBat went to a wedding. Then he went to work in the bar. Then somebody blew him away. Bullets in the face, neck, and head. Body face up in some accounts. Face down in others. Soul gone to mob heaven. A couple of weeks later, in Daily News' Voice of the People section, an angry Bensonhurst native would give Bob Herbert a piece of her mind. Outraged. Brooklyn. Contrary to Bob Herbert's November 5th column, Tally's Restaurant did serve food, and the food was excellent. I was always treated with the utmost respect from the help, including Mike DeBat. My family and friends knew Mike for years, Mr. Herbert. You portrayed him as a big guy in size, but small in pride and self-respect. How wrong are you? You said Mike was 37 years old and living with his mother, and you put him down for that. Mike had been married and had a child. After a divorce, he moved in with his mother temporarily. So what's wrong with that? I'm 27 years old. I possess a master's degree in psychology. I'm well-educated and well-adjusted. But I, too, live with my mother. That must make me as swift as Mike DeBat. Do the metropolitan area and the Bensonhurst community a favor, Mr. Herbert, and keep your trap shut about subjects which you know nothing about. Gina R. Cambria, Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, New York City. Now, in the early 2000s, this place was known as Danza's Restaurant. And uh, the owner was a gentleman by the name of Stephen Carroll. Now, there was news reports in the papers and on TV that the people that were working in this restaurant, including the owner and some others, uh, they reported that this place was haunted. Yes, the place was haunted. They said that they would uh, hear things and see apparitions in the basement. One person even said that... Um, there would be people uh, sitting at a table, and then one second they're gone. They would hear all types of noises, apparitions. So it became a whole thing where this old mob joint is haunted, and uh, Michael DeBat and uh, Joseph Stymie D'Angelo are haunting the place. So we're going to go inside. We're going to eat something, and um, we're going to check it out and see if we get any weird vibes in there. <laughs> so once again, we're at Tally's, and... Um, we're going to go inside. I'm going to play a little clip from the news. This is uh, from the Mob Facts YouTube channel. I'll link his channel to this. And you get an idea of what exactly these people working here uh, were experiencing. And then we'll head inside. How's that sound? I think it sounds pretty cool to me. 6205 18th Avenue. A good busy street in a busy neighborhood with a nondescript busy family restaurant in the middle of the block. Probably like one near you. But in the basement, sometimes, some people say, something looks. You know, I was coming upstairs, the door just shut. It wasn't supposed to shut, and it just closed by itself. There was nobody down there. Another waiter says he saw something in the basement. Out of the corner of my eye, I, I noticed someone down near the boilers. I didn't think anything of it. So I go get the walk in the walking box, take the go out, and there's no one there. There were two men talking to each other, and I went in search of the conversation. And I walked from room to room, and there was nobody in this restaurant. Come on, come on, come on. 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 Come so we are sitting inside the former location of Sammy the Bull's tallies. I don't know there's something going on over here. Someone's banging over here, but uh, maybe it's a ghost. No. So far the vibes have been all right. No ghosts. Uh, I don't feel anything weird being in here. Um, even knowing that two murders happened inside the confines of where we sit right now. 
Um, as I mentioned before, this place is called uh, Like Cafe. Um, here's the menu. They describe it as uh, Hong Kong fast food. Um, right now, I got a Spam and Egg Sandwich. Thought I would give that a shot. We got some other food on the way. I'm going to try to get some more footage from inside here. And uh, I'm going to eat. Because um, if I'm going to come in and film, why not patronize the uh, restaurant, right? So I'm going to eat. We're going to order something. And I'm going to try to get you guys some more footage from inside Tally's. I'll be back in a minute. All right. We ordered some pad thai. That looks pretty good. We're going to get digging into that. I got something else coming too. So to go with the pad thai, we got this fried pork chop with some mayo sauce and looks like it's sitting on some crispy little noodles there. And uh, so far so good. Not the uh, food fare that uh, Sammy would have served. Uh, <laughs> of course not, but I'm enjoying it nonetheless. So before I spoke to you about the hauntings and the basement and everything, and I said somebody kept whacking, making noise over here. So actually, this is the basement door right here. That leads down to the basement. Somebody's coming up. Before they catch me, I'll stop filming. But yeah, the basement is right there. And I guess that would have been um, a place where these guys would hang out a lot. Sammy and them, probably down in this basement, doing some work. You never know what went on down there. Now, unfortunately, because of the way this restaurant is set up, you see every uh, table is separate with these uh, bamboo curtains. It's hard to get like a whole, you know, wide angle of the whole restaurant. So I keep having to sneak little shots here and there. But I'm going to do a final walkthrough before I get out of here. Um, and hopefully you guys can see as much of the inside of this place as possible. Of course, if you live in New York City or you're visiting, you could always come here yourself. But I don't think anyone has actually made a video on YouTube where they actually go inside like I'm doing today. So I thought it would be worth it. Come out here, get something to eat. Check out the interior. But like I said, unfortunately, as you can see behind me, these bamboo curtains are separating every single um, booth, so to speak. So it's hard to really get the whole thing. But I'm going to do my best to get it before we get out of here. Kitchen, kitchen, kitchen. All right. Let's take a look at the bathroom. Inside tallies, probably where the bathroom was originally. There's two bathrooms here. It would be a little odd for these restaurants to change the bathroom locations. Probably got to change all the pipes out or whatever. If the shit's already existing, why change it? So this is one of the bathrooms in here. And uh, you got a little walk through there. I'm going to get one more walk through on our way out of here. Let's see. Hopefully they don't get mad at me. So let's go out. Here's the kitchen for where Tally's bar. Back here. This is another area. I'm going to make our way out. Inside Tally's. Go, boo. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. All right. All right, well, I think that went well. I think that went pretty good, actually. Got to eat inside uh, the former location of... Tally's Cocktail Lounge and Restaurant, of course, Sammy the Bulls, Tally's. So you guys got to see um, inside what that place looks like now. Once again, I apologize. A little tough to film in there. It was kind of like railroad seating in there, the way it was uh, set up. But I think I got uh, some good footage. Now we're walking in the side streets in Bensonhurst. Here you guys uh, get a look at the neighborhood. 
You know what I'll do? I think I think I'll walk down this block and then I'll come back around just so you guys can get a feel of this area because a lot of people overseas, a lot of people um, in other parts of the country that have been never been to New York City, they study New York City crime, New York City mafia stuff, and they never really get to see like what some of these areas look like. So uh, yeah, let me just walk up here. You guys can look at the houses. Look at the neighborhood. Look at the beautiful blue sky. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this upload. Uh, and uh, I'm going to keep bringing you guys content that uh, I hope you continue to like. Uh, the channel's doing all right. Um, some stuff that I put up recently, not as well as I thought it would. I did an interview with Gilberto Valle, the accused cannibal cop. Put that out a couple days ago. Check that out, please. Gilberto Valley was a defendant in one of the most interesting, oddest, bizarre cases in frickin' United States history. Gilberto Valley, of course, known as the Cannibal Cop. Check that out, please. Please, check out that interview. It's about 90 minutes. It's the best interview he's ever done. I'm not just being biased, huh? Alright, you know what? Let's get out of here. I hope you enjoyed this upload. Please like. Please subscribe. And, uh... I'll see you guys in the comments.